Hello, my name is Julian Karl. I'm the founder of the Responsive Fashion Institute. Um, and I think you can see my presentation already. Um, first of all, I would like to thank um, Anna Marie for the invitation and the platform of this fantastic event. Um, it's really exciting to be part of this conversation of um, the fashion innovation and AI and digital fashion and uh, wearable technologies. And i um, really happy to be here. Well, we've heard enough or a lot today already about um, the, the market sizes and the market potentials of these topics. And I would like to give you an insight now of, of what we've been doing with the Responsive Fashion Institute and also um, the potential of what could be developed in the future. Uh, the Responsive Fashion Institute is based in Munich and we develop innovative digital fashion applications with um, uh, XR technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, we develop virtual spaces for cross-segmented market potential of sustainable innovative applications in fashion. And we test and analyze experiences and presentations of fashion in virtual environments. Like everyone else, we really entered the space, the virtual space since the pandemic. And um, I just want to give you an idea what we did there. The first project we did was in autumn 2020. It was an innovation challenge from the state of Bavaria, where we hosted a workshop uh, about the data visualization of the participants um, closet. So we calculated the data of their closet and visualized it in virtual space. And we did it in FrameVR, which at the time was very easy, very accessible. It's a web-based platform, which is very um, low tech from the point of, of usage. So you don't need VR glasses or um, any high technology. So it was really good enter point. And um, it was a hackathon and one of our team won the most uh, marketable concept. So we really introduced this concept of uh, fashion innovation in Bavaria and in Germany at the time. Um, we did a couple of events on AI and fashion and um, we were forced due to the pandemic to host them on, um, on Zoom, but everyone was a bit tired of Zoom at the time in 2020 and 2021, beginning 2021. So we really tried to push the boundaries and brought the conversation into virtual spaces. So we created a virtual space for the research on AI and fashion in a platform called FrameVR. It's a company from Ireland and it's very uh, interesting because it has all the data uh, legislation from the EU. So it's like the highest um, data protection um, that is out there um, because it's European based. And uh, we did a couple of workshops there and events where we um, created some workshop situations with like um, interactive post-its and uh, we really try to to push the boundaries there with uh, education and exchange and research in virtual spaces. Uh, we also hosted a, a digital fashion event from Brazil and Latin America. It was the Meta Fash Fashion Week. So we hosted the closing event and we had over 200 people from all over the world in that space. And uh, it was really exciting um, to really see what, what VR can be used for. We also tested with this space um, visualization of digital fashion in virtual spaces. So we commissioned three digital fashion designs and uh, one male, one female and a unisex version. And we um, really tested how can you visualize that? So we brought in the 3D files into the, um, into the space, but we also um, looked at how we can present digital fashion. So we really wanted to reveal we evaluate the whole concept of, of fashion shows, catwalk shows, like we didn't want to fly people from all over the world for a special location. We didn't want to creating a first row. We wanted to use a different dimension than the straight runway. So the idea was that um, the digital fashion can fly around us or we can fly around the digital fashion. So we really wanted to push the boundaries with this. 
We also hosted uh, an event uh, in collaboration with the Digital Maker Collective from URL in London uh, for the IAM conference in Barcelona. And um, we did a test pilot for the Academy for Fashion and Design in Germany, a masterclass of fashion innovation, um, where we uh, really brought in education in virtual spaces and we evaluated the um, educational effect on it afterwards. Then we created another space and it was called a fiber fashion space. This was on the VR platform Engage as well. And Engage is really easy because you can uh, not necessarily, you don't need a VR glass for that. You can, it, it's an app that you can download. You have to download, so it's not web-based. But um, it's very secure, again, the data literacy, but it's also very useful because you can upload loads of things. So if you have like a corporate events, it's really, really um, easy because uh, it's very unlikely that it crashes. It's still an evolving technology, VR, but it's still very stable. And especially if you do big events um, with loads of people, it's really uh, good to, um, to use those facilities. With this space, we really wanted to uh, create an environment that has a positive effect on the user. So we looked at loads of research, like what is good, what colors are good, what sceneries are good. And we tried to integrate it into the development or the design processes. And we evaluated in it. We did a couple of workshops in there. We did a couple of events in there. And um, as you see here, this is like a social area where we created some, some seating. And we evaluated within the space, inside the space. Uh, so here you see the questions um, of the survey um, on the wall. And then we also tested the digital fashion aspect as well, because since we developed the first place, we really thought it can be more done in the relation to, um, to visualize digital fashion, more developed in, in Clothe 3. And it was a really close uh, working relationship with the digital fashion designer, SGI creator, which is really fantastic fashion designer. So just going back here. So here you see me as an avatar and the 3D file of the digital fashion. And we also created images of it. And here you really see the, the detail of it because um, this is all, this was all done before this AI really, AI fashion really happened and the prompting happened. And here you really see the detail and the, the, uh, the way we really tried to, to integrate patterns and integrate uh, detailing. And um, here's another example. So you see the reflection, you see transparency and all of that. So we really try to push the boundary with like a digital craft of, of uh, making fashion or creating fashion. Here's another example. And uh, we created six different outfits again that were that are unisex and um, we're really happy of the outcomes. And again, um, these six different outfits are inside the space within uh, S3D files. They also, um, we also tested different visualizations. Uh, and one of it was that we created a chroma key version uh, video, like a video, like a rendering as a video. And that was then in front of a green screen and we could integrate that and place it everywhere in that space. And we also tested immersive podcasts. So we recorded an interview uh, with an expert on AI and ethics of AI, and we brought him into the space um, as a video. And it's a really nice feature in Engage that it's user face. So if you move around, it's always focusing you. And uh, that gives a really nice 3D effect. Another project we did was the uh, new parameters of making. We did a focus on Ethiopia with there and with Ethiopian partners, we created a design research map. So uh, we brought that into frame because we want to bring the Ethiopian designers and researchers in the space as well and really make it inclusive. So we really looked what's working on a global scale, what is really accessible. And um, here you see the outcome. So we combined it, it with AI. So we collected loads of images of um, skies from photographs from Ethiopia. And we then uh, combined them because we looked at different um, design research areas. And from all these areas, we used those skies and collected them 
and combined them. So here you see a sky box, which is a merge of all different regions that we did the research. And uh, here you see an image of the, it's a screenshot of the um, frame VR space. And here on the right, you see a map of Ethiopia. And we mapped it out where we did the research and where we collected data on design research. And then we uh, connected it through these uh, strings that you see in there. And then we brought in LIDAR scans, we brought in photographs, we brought in text files, and we brought in podcasts as well. So this is, again, a research and design um, project where we really thought, how can we visualize, how can we reserve cultural uh, topics, how can we um, visualize data in a different way, and how can we make it accessible collaboratively with Ethiopian partners. So if you look at research and if you look at uh, AI, as we want to talk about it, you have to look at data. And um, the, the first and really most prominent example of fashion data for me was uh, is the example by Holition. And you've probably seen that it was back in 2021. I'm a huge fan of the company Holition in London. And they're really, I think, the, the pioneers of uh, working with new technologies and, and making um bringing more sense into fashion. And uh, they did a data visualization of the shopping behavior um, throughout the week of uh, lots of consumers. And um, if you don't know the video, I can really highly recommend you to look at it. I can uh, share the link um, later as well. And it's um, a really fantastic way of how you can visualize data and make data understandable rather than having cakes or towers or numbers on an Excel file. Because I think for lots of creators in the fashion industry, it's a really big problem that the data is uh, not accessible and that the data is not understandable. And that's coming more from a, from a, a business background or it's very numeric. And I think we as creatives are very, um, for us necessarily numbers don't only always work so well. So I think it's, it's a really fantastic example what data can be as well and what educational purpose data can have. Um, another very interesting example, you probably remember this gentleman, Christopher Wiley from the, um, from the um, scandal, from the election with um, the Cambridge Analytica company. Uh, Christopher Wiley um, was a whistleblower for the case that brought up all the, the scandal about the data usage for um, um, yeah, influencing elections. And in 2026, it was really prominent. You've probably seen the documentary. And uh, after that, um, all of that happened, Christopher Wiley started to work for H&M. And uh, he said uh, when he did his PhD um, on um, data um, analysis of, of fashion music, he said fashion and music are the most information tools for predicting someone's personality. So again, uh, since then, he developed uh, lots of solutions for H&M and H&M recently announced that they want to focus their or shift their focus from the, the selling physical clothes to uh, data because they see a data as a as new oil, as so many people say it. And um, they are, have a huge loyalty program with over 200 million consumers who signed up to their loyalty program. So they know a lot of things about the consumers and um, their shopping behaviors. So this is really one to watch out for. And I think it's really interesting on um, how a fast fashion company is really shifting its focus because maybe, and um, that's, a, that's a question, maybe this tipping point of fast fashion has been reached and certain um, regulations are coming up. We heard from uh, before on the panel um, from a, on a European level. I mean, there's a lot of things happening there and it won't be as easy to sell fast fashion clothes as it used to be. So this is one to watch out for in my prediction. But if you look at data, then you can look at AI and fashion and uh, so much is happening there as well. I mean, the Instagram and LinkedIn is full of prompts of, um, of examples of people testing that and uh, playing around with it. And um, I did a workshop in um, 
beginning of the year and uh, it was more for spatial environments. But I think it was really interesting that um, it really um, I kind of moved away from the environments and I focused on the um, accessorized. And I think this is one of the very early examples and that was a previous version. So a lot of things have changed since then. But just to give you an idea of how vast um, results you can get within that 90 seconds. So, um, so this is 180 seconds. So it's two prompts, so to say. And uh, like the vast detailing you see on... Um, Accessories, and I was asking myself, where do these accessories come from? What's happening there? And um, and at the time, or right now, no one can give you an idea where the source is for these designs and how these designs are collided um, and combined. I also tested um, fashion. So again, you have these prompts, and I integrated my face into it, and that was interesting experience for me personally because you know it's about this idea of identity and. Um, my digital identity and uh, how I see myself, but also I thought it was really interesting was how how the way I can create fashion that doesn't exist in the physical world, but how you can create certain textures and materials that are really not possible in, in real life, or it would be really time consuming. And I don't always want to look at, at uh, international things. So I looked at myself, I love in Munich. So I thought, you know, I look at the Bavarian aesthetic and uh, played around with the idea of folk costumes like the Dirndl that you wear for the beer festival. And I really tried to push the boundaries with craft and um, just wanted to give you some examples of that. So I really came up with this idea of fashion and identity and emotions. And I really wanted to share a vision with you guys that uh, we have at the Responsive Fashion Institute and that we work on right now. And if you look at emotive fashion or emotional fashion, here's an example of Iga Veslepka. And uh, she creates wearable technology that shows the emotions of the users. And I think it's stunningly beautiful. And I think it's fantastic what she does. Uh, check out her Instagram. And she really does really, really cool things. And um, its aesthetic is beautiful. And it's really fantastic. And we created this physical space, again, as I mentioned before, where we looked at how is a positive impact uh, on a psychological base for users in virtual spaces. And now we would like to combine that from the spaces into the fashion. And then it's the idea, how can we create emotive fashion? And we call it emotive fashion XR, where you can uh, have various identity to foster self-discovery and empowerment, uh, really live cultural heritage through digital crafts. So really create the idea of saving to create safe spaces where um, users can really preserve things that will get lost otherwise. If you look, there's lots of uh, cultural genocides happening in the world right now. Uh, how can you preserve digitally those um, goods that are otherwise getting lost and really have you know the whole idea of building identities and really how you can work with that. And... Um, really create an organic integration of AI as a new perspective of fashion. And I think I'm out of time, but there's some really exciting tools out there. So don't expect everything to be linear. And I really want to encourage everyone to be really straightforward and really co-create this future together. Nothing has been said, nothing has been fully understood. Don't be afraid to, to work in this area. Don't be afraid to ask this question. There's this fantastic uh, methods uh, by Dan and Raby. It's called speculative prototyping, when you can really create the future you want. And again, I can really encourage everyone. There are the two sets from the UN, the Sustainable Development Goals. So maybe integrate this really cool uh, planetary-centered design research and um, future prototyping tools and the current fashion system isn't up to date. It's a really outdated system. It's really exploitative. It's absolutely not sustainable. And um, let's join forces. Let's, you know, get this old system out of the way and create some magic out of it. And that's the end of it. I uh, just quote from the uh, CTO of uh, the Fabricant, um, digital fashion will define our identity. Blockchain will empower ownership and provenance. AI will boost creativity and augmented reality will merge the physical and the digital world.